So quite a while ago now, I made a video about uh, this amplifier, which is an LM386. Uh, and I made a bunch of these because I wanted to use them in projects and they're nice and compact and low power. Uh, and they can operate up to two watts. Uh, but now I want to operate a speaker this size, uh, which is more like eight watts. And um, so I needed some different amplifiers to this one because this, this one wouldn't, wouldn't power this speaker. So I've looked on uh, an electronics supplier site and did a search through the amplifiers that they have. And I came up with, uh, I wanted to find a stereo and a mono uh, amplifier because I wanted uh, one of each because in a lot of my projects I only want to use mono but I don't really want to use a stereo amplifier and I just use one channel because I don't like doing things like that. Um, so I found these two and one of them is a mono which is an SJ540 and it operates down to 3.5 volts so you can use it with a lithium ion cell basically. Uh, and the other one is a TJ7266 uh, and it's a, a, it's a quadraphonic amplifier but if you use it in bridge amplifier mode, then you can use it as, uh, well, you can use it as stereo anyway, as uh, just two of the quadraphonic ones. But when you use it in bridge mode, you get more power out of the stereo um, signal. So you can you, you use two quadraphonic amplifiers together uh, to power the speaker. And then you don't need a, a, a capacitor in line with the speaker either. So it, it's a lot better. And, and the mono one is a bridge mode amplifier as well. And I prototyped up a double-sided board and now I've never actually made a uh, copper clad board uh, double sided before at home. Uh, so that's the first time I did that. Uh, and it's, it's it's okay, but the trouble is you, you need to solder where you've got tracks on the top. You need to solder to the tracks on the top, which can be a bit fiddly. And you also need to solder where, you've, where the tracks go on the bottom as well. Uh, so it's okay for doing small circuits uh, like this. Maybe a, even a you know twice the size of this will be fine. Uh, but I wouldn't want to do a double-sided board or anything really complicated. It'd be, just be uh, a nightmare to do. Uh, so I'll go through the data sheets and describe uh, the, pro the circuit that I've used on here and, and uh, also the features that are on the amp actual amplifiers themselves. So this is the STA540. It's a stereo amplifier. I've got it plugged into my laptop um, earphone socket and also plugged into two speakers, uh, the left and right. I've got a lithium ion cell uh, with a boost converter to go up to 12 volts uh, to supply the power. Uh, and when you switch the power on, there's no pops or clicks, so the soft startup circuit works perfectly well on this amplifier. Also, if I switch, uh, turn up the volume to maximum, you can't hear any background hiss either. It's a very quiet amplifier. I don't think you'd probably hear it on the on the phone because I'm going to call this, this on my phone anyway. Uh, but I'll start with audio. The galaxy. It's a sort of electronic book. It'll tell you everything you want to know. That's his job. I like the it cover. plays well. Don't and then if I take out the, the right speaker, you can hear the left speaker. And I'll take out the left speaker and plug the right speaker back in. And then plug the left speaker back in. Enter that code on the tabulator and read what it says. Vogon Constructor Fleets. Here is what to do if you want to get a lift from a Vogon. Forget it. So this is the TJ7266, the mono amplifier. Uh, and when I plug in this single lithium ion cell, because it should work all the way down to 3.5 volts, there's no clicks or hisses again, the, the, the standby startup, soft startup circuit works fine. Uh, and if I start the audio... Right to the galaxy. It's a sort of electronic book. It'll tell you everything you want to know. Again, pl it plays job. fine. I like the cover. Don't panic. It's the first helpful or intelligible thing anybody said to me all day. And that's why it sells so well. So this is a circuit diagram for the uh, power amplifier. And uh, it's been taken from both of the data sheets. So. When I selected these power amplifiers, I selected them because they have the same pinout. So not all of these, uh, it's, the package is called a multi-watt, but not all of them have the same pinout on them. Uh, so these are, this is for the stereo uh, one, but for the mono one, it, it uses exactly the same pins for, for this uh, channel. Uh, and the power for the amplifiers is, is up here, and they are the same pins, uh, but the mono one doesn't have this diag pin. And the diag pin on the stereo one is for, to diagnose 
volts so it will tell you if it's overheated or if there's a short circuit on the output or some things like that and all I've done with the diag is just take it out to a connector just in case I want to use it in the future so going from the input so I've got like the input from so for example my laptop as I showed in the demonstrations I come through 10k resistors and the reason I do that is because uh, the volume control takes the input signal uh, on each channel and it goes from um, takes it from here down the ground pin so for minimum uh, volume or straight through to the op amp itself for maximum volume uh, so it's just a potential divider which uh, which does that but because it takes it down can take it down to the ground pin I have these 10k resistors in here so the maximum load on the output is uh, a 10k uh, to, prevent, to prevent me shorting out the input uh, and it just goes, each channel is treated exactly the same, it comes through here. And this circuit diagram, like I say, is taken from the data sheets, which I'll go uh, go over in a little while, show show the differences on there. There's not much difference between the two example circuits on the data sheets. It's only really up here where I've got this jumper in here. So for the uh, for the mono amplifier, I can solder blob over this, this jumper. Uh, and that, the mono amplifier uses uh, a 47 microfarad to there uh, and 47k here and here whereas the stereo one uh, uses 10k here and 10 microfarad there uh, so that's the only difference and I did that because I wanted to produce one set of circuits um, when I ordered them from, from the PCB manufacturer and I wanted to be able to apply both of these amplifiers to, to the single circuit so I just needed to make one one variation of the circuits and it served me for everything. And uh, and the only other thing here really is I've got some. So on the circuit, it specifies you need these capacitors across the uh, across the power supply to to prevent noise coming in. And it's very these really are low noise uh, amplifiers. When I have them in 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 um, actual operation, there's uh, hardly any. In fact, I don't hear, when the volume's turned right up and I have no signal coming in. I don't hear any background hiss at all. Uh, but I think to to get that you have to follow the instructions on the data sheets themselves, and they say that you really need the, to take your ground from a particular point, and then you star it out into signal ground and uh, power ground, uh, and it specifies what you put on the signal ground and what you put on the power ground. And if you follow those instructions, I think I think it really gives a a good noise immunity uh, to to the amplifiers. So this is the pinout uh, of the two power amplifiers on the data sheets. As I was uh, speaking about when I was going over the circuit diagram, uh, and on the left here you see the stereo one, so it's got the right channel uh, stuff on on here at the top of the on the upper pins, but of course there's no connection on the um, mono amplifier for those. They're just not there, which means you can interchange them without having to worry about putting signals on pins you don't want to put signals on. Uh, the power input to is, is the same pin on both. Uh, signal uh, ground and power ground, the same pin. Uh, of course, the diagnostics uh, pin is just on the stereo one. Um, standby is the same on both. Uh, the next pin mute on the mono amplifier is a signal rejection on the stereo one. Uh, but that doesn't cause an issue because it has components that you can switch between like I showed you on the circuit diagram and, and I'll show you the circuit diagrams in these data sheets to show you the difference that they specify. And then the, the lower pins are just the left channel and voltage pins and they're identical on both on both of the packages which makes them interchangeable which, uh, which is uh, very handy uh, for having it on a single circuit board. So here's the circuits uh, in the data sheets and starting off at the top right so you've got the capacitors on the supply pins um, and both pins 3 and 13 it's identical on both devices uh, so that's exactly the same uh, and then for chan for left channel pin 1 and pin 2 uh, it forms a bridge uh, amplifier between the two internal amplifiers so that's the same on both uh, and pin 8 is a ground, power ground, um, pin 9 is signal ground, so identical again, um, 
pin six on the stereo one has a 47 microfarad capacity down to the ground. So that's this is to do with signal noise rejection on on that amplifier. Uh, but on pin six on the mono one is a, a mute control, uh, and it just has a slightly different configuration. Uh, hence why on the circuit I put a jumper in so I can add uh, this extra capacitor here and have the option of putting 10k rather than the 47 microfarad capacitor. And then pin 11 and 12, so these both get connected together. Uh, and oh yeah, that's so that's the right channel input. So that's it's only on the left one and on the uh, on the mono one. Of course, they don't appear. Uh, pin four and five they get connected together. Um, so I've only got pin four on the mono one. I don't have a pin five. So that again, it's compatible. Uh, then just pin seven remains, and that's the standby. That's like the soft startup. Thing and it just has a time delay capacitor and uh, resistor in there uh, and pin 7 on on the mono one has exactly the same uh, hence so I can create a single PCB just get a batch of them created and whenever I need to make either a stereo or a mono amplifier I just use the same PCB I just construct it slightly differently so on on the mono one I uses fewer components and has the um, has the solder bridge that I need to put on, the, on in there so finally, the title page of the data sheets uh, and the mono voltage, uh, the mono amplifier operates all the way down to three volts. I think I said three point five volts earlier, but it's actually all the way down to three volts. So between three and eighteen volts. Uh, the stereo amplifier operates between eight and I think it's about twenty two volts. Uh, so they've got good voltage ranges. Uh, the stereo one you can operate in quadraphonic mode if you want. Um, I haven't been, uh, made the circuit to operate in quadraphonic mode. Uh, just in stereo mode but using it as a bridge amplifier and I quite like these bridge amplifiers now I've seen them um, and then the mono one and the stereo one they both have uh, short circuit and thermal protection and and uh, really good noise rejection